Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. Nice to see you back here for the Silk Report, day six roundup, as it says. Uh, let's get to it, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Um, no surprises for guessing the first one. Here we go. Poor Andre Rublev. Bless his little heart. <sighs> As you probably all know, today, in a in a groundbreaking development on the Silk Report, I'm going to talk about Marin Cilic. Rather than just show the did he win screen, I think it's, <laughs> it's impossible to avoid Marin Cilic today because... Arguably, he was the star of the day. Let me know if you think in the chat somebody was a bigger star today, but I felt as though this was Chilich's day and maybe his best day in four years, perhaps. Obviously, getting to the final in 2018 and winning a slam many, many, many years ago at, uh, in New York. Uh, John's bailed on his own report. Uh, hi, hi, Gene, by the way. Nice. Lol. Wow. What a name for an account. Uh, by the way, Gene... Uh, Hats off to you. I think you called this Chilich match uh, in terms of the result. Uh, yeah, he was on fire. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Let's talk about Chilich and let's talk about his level. And then we'll come to Rublev, uh, who was on the other side of the net, because, of course, there's always a, you know, a winner and a loser in these things. And, and Chilich was just unbelievable. I think at the end of the match, the commentator said something like, Chilich, amazing today. And I think he really was. This is you know, top, top level and, and bodes well if he can maintain it for the rest of the tournament. Let's see how he gets on. I've actually got Chilich Renaissance in my uh, in my notes. I've also seen a, an amazing Chilich stat today. Uh, he's the 20th male player of the Open era to um, make the fourth round or further at a slam 25 times. Um, and I think he's kind of... Um, He's up there with, uh, no, he's the seventh male player. Excuse me, my apologies. But he's there 25 times in the fourth round. Of it's, a, it's a really good achievement and a really good career he's had. I mean, I know he's been a bit of a mocking figure in the last couple of years. Yeah, make sure you hit that like button, please. I want to get to 100 likes. I saw a video that I did a couple of days ago, had like 97 likes. Not happy. Not happy, John Silk. Not happy, Silk Report. I need 100 um, today's going to be pretty tricky, I think. Hi, Fatima. Nice to see you in the in the live chat as well. Um, so, yeah, let's get back to it. So, Chilich obviously took an, got an early break, and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Rublev broke back, and when he broke back, I thought, okay, I had Rublev down to win this match, and I thought ultimately he would prevail, especially once he got back on serve in that first um, in that first set. But Chilich managed to nick it. Nick it? Is that unfair? Do you know what I mean? He sort of, when it's a 7-5, kind of, you know, you, you you sometimes seize the moment, and Chilich certainly did. But from that moment onwards, I don't think he ever looked back. I think, um, you know, I know Rublev won the third set, but I, 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 I think Rublev is going to win sets at slams. He should win sets at slams, especially in the third round. But um, hi, Mex Carpentry, love dogs. I think I love dogs too. Absolutely love it. Uh, nice that you hit the like button. Thanks so very much. Rublev on the slide, Kuzmanov. Yeah, I'm going to come to that in a, in a second. Um, but let's just finish with the Chilich and the celebration from Chilich at the end. Like he'd won, he'd won, you know, the Champions League, uh, which was amazing. By the way, talking of which, I am sacrificing 20, 25 minutes of my beloved Manchester United day today to come and talk to you guys. They're playing right now. They just kicked off 11 minutes ago against West Ham. Keep me updated with the score in the chat um, if you know how Man United are getting on. Uh, we've not had a great season, so I'm hoping for three points today. But this is not the football report. This is day six roundup, John Silk tennis report. So let's stick to it. Um so, yeah, Chilich Renaissance and, and his celebration at the end was great. Obviously, winning the US Open in 2014, I think it was. Beating Nishikori in the final, kind of, you know, making the most of, of, of the big three, if you like, absence or, or lack of form in that tournament. You also saw him getting to the finals at Wimbledon and then also the US, sorry, the Australian Open in 2018, I believe. But, of course, Nadal, who Chilich played that year, was, was injured. So, yeah, um, he'll be playing Felix next which is, is tough. 
It's tough. I'm probably tipping Felix for that one, but Felix's form, funny enough, despite the fact he's made the fourth round, I think Felix was unbelievable in the ATP Cup, but for some reason he's not quite hit those levels, I don't think. But he's going to have to if he beats, gonna, wants to beat Chilich. Let me know in the in the um, chat. Yeah, Chilich beat Federer in the semifinals of the US Open that year, but that's true. But normally, you know, I, I think it's really interesting why these big three have been so successful. I, I, I've seen it, I've heard it on another podcast where it's kind of the, the big three, Djokovic, Federer and Nadal, they kind of hunt in packs. And what do I mean? You can beat one. You can, like, like Tsitsipas beat um, Federer in 2019 at the Australian Open, but then he runs into Nadal. And normally you can beat one, but you can't beat, you, you were having for, arguably for 10 years, uh, you, you would have to beat two of these guys to win a slam. And you might get through one, but you're not going to get through two. Whereas, so Cilic in 2018 got through Federer and in the final, sorry, 2014, in the final, he's by Nishikori. So do you know what I mean? He only managed to beat one of the big three, if you like, which um, is, is a great achievement, but but I'm not sure if you can beat two. And and, and that's how it is and how it has been for a long time until probably the last couple of years with obviously Nadal's travails and, and same with Federer. So let's talk about Rublev anyway. Um, this is Rublev. This is where he is. He's number five in the world. I didn't think he had a great 2021, despite the fact I think he managed to improve his ranking by one or two places. Um Gene, that's a... Oh, let's see. Head-to-head -head against Felix. Yeah, Gene loves his head-to-heads, I know. Uh, three, three, zero. Hi, Taddy Champ. Thanks for the super chat. Um, yeah, that's that's a, a good point, Gene. But, you know, I, I think really these head-to-head -head stats, super important because we can see how the matchup goes. But I also think, you know, Felix now is very different to, say, Felix two years ago. It's like the Medvedev one in particular. Medvedev is the best example of this. Sometimes I see Medvedev head-to-heads and it's like, you know, he's only beaten Rafa, I think, once. Uh, and yet, but really, you know, pre-2019 doesn't count with Medvedev or pre-summer 2019 doesn't count with Medvedev. So, and I, I often see these stats like head-to-head 3-0, 5-1 -head, or whatever, but they haven't played for four years or something. So I'd probably look a bit more at today. Um, I'm guessing, though, from your comment there, Gene, you think Chilich will beat uh, Felix. Fair enough. If you do, I still make Ch uh, Felix the slight favourite. But my my viewpoint on Chilich has changed in the last few hours, that's for sure. But, yeah, let's get back to Rublev. Um, uh, tell me what you think about Rublev in the chat. I'm going to say some things now, and I think his limitations, again, were exposed today. Second serve woes continues. Chilich was eating up on his return. Nice comment, Gene, and, and one I can't disagree with. Um, I think Rublev is a, in the same category as Schwartzman, I think, and I, I know they're a similar stature, and I, I think Rublev serves anyway. Has he got a serve that will mean that he can win a slam? I mean, I was su suspecting that he would run into Medvedev at some point in this tournament and go out as he does often, but he hasn't even got that far this time. And I, I think, yeah, Rublev could well end up being one of these guys that just cleans up at 250s and 500s. But as soon as, you know, Rublev's level to me actually doesn't change a lot. It's a good level. And it's a level that will get you to third rounds, fourth rounds, perhaps even quarterfinals at slams. But as soon as he runs into a player either on fire like Chilich today or just simply a better player than him like Medvedev, he goes out. You know, there's no, he needs a landmark win. Uh, if you like, not just a slam, but a landmark win elsewhere. And I don't count Rublev beating Medvedev uh, just before the US Open last year as a landmark win. Medvedev spent more times fighting with the camera than he did with uh, Rublev in that match. So I'm not interested in that. Anyway, let me know if you think I'm being too harsh on him. Um, I just think that that I don't, I don't know where. Sometimes you look at a guy and you say, OK, needs to improve here. And especially when it comes to Rublev, you can say needs to improve the serve. OK, but kind of how with his stature? Um, you know, Rafa's made tweaks to his serve over the years, and, and I think it's got better, and it's better than it was, say, 10 or 15 years ago. But he has so many other parts of his game that, that are just unbelievable. His serve almost, certainly in the early in his career, was just, OK, let's get that out of the way and let's get the point going. Um, and uh, I still think to some extent that's how it is. Uh, I think he uses a bit more of a weapon now, but I just don't see Rublev you know, where he goes from here. And I, I'm a bit worried for the boy, really. Um, let me know what you think in the chat. But uh, let's move on anyway. I think we've done that for now. Um, 
let's move on I, just just briefly i just want to just have a quick look at this account again because it is a great account and it certainly deserves more followers i love this tracking the emperor's return to greatness title since this account started two will that be going up to three in the next seven days let me know if um, i'm getting a bit too carried away with chillich uh, like i say my viewpoint on him and even this account has changed just in the last few hours alone okay let's move on uh taylor fritz ladies and gentlemen taylor fritz winning in five sets today getting a monkey off his back i think it was a very very good win for taylor fritz by the way um you know there was a tough match i mean bautista a good to beat T bautista a good in five sets i know and of course fritz won the first set six love coming back from two sets to one down but like this tweet here from vanch suggests the biggest thing for taylor fritz is that finally he's got this zero and seven record at slams and he's now made it to the second week out of a grand slam which is just just great for him and and, and he's a good enough player he's a top 20 player he should have made a slam before but as Gil Gross mentioned on his pod earlier today he just has rotten luck with um with his draws I mean look at all these defeats by the way we're not we're not you, you know these are not Rublev defeats to Chilich, for example or, or 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 shock defeats to to lowly ranked players if you like you know Dominic Team, who is now obviously a Grand Slam winner and when fully fit is a top five player in the world Federer 20 Grand Slams Dominic Team again Shabavalov uh, in 2020 and where Taylor Fritz was then I mean and also it was a five set match Sonego Djokovic, of course, at the Aussie Open last year when Djokovic was having a few troubles with his, um, I think it was a rib injury, wasn't it, that he had at the time. But still, you know, Djokovic at the Australian Open, there's no shame in losing in five. In fact, he probably pushed Djokovic more than anyone else at last year's Aussie Open. And then obviously losing uh, in Wimbledon to Zverev, um, who I see as a future Wimbledon champion, by the way, but that's for another podcast, I think. But finally today, getting through that barrier, if you like, and uh, winning in five. And uh, Bautista a good, he's a good, solid player, a good, solid professional. And if you beat him, hats off to you. And, and I think it's great. And his celebration at the end was clearly he he knew his record, um, you know, his round three record in majors until today, which is highlighted there from Vanch. Thanks for that. Talking of getting monkeys off your back or breaking through barriers, uh, Sabalenka today uh i was watching this match at about one two o'clock this morning um and having lost the first set against vondrasova and vondrasova by the way you know that's you know a, a grand slam finalist that's a tough third round match to see where you're at and of course she gave an on-court interview afterwards where she said yay just 10 double faults today and we all laughed and we all felt for her and and, and, and great as well. I'm really pleased. I've actually become a bit of a Sabalenka fan. Uh, I'm watching her and I'm thinking, and by the way, I know I mentioned it a couple of days ago when she did, I think, 19 double faults in her previous round. So she's, she's you know, getting better. And by the way, today, obviously, three sets as well. So um, uh, 10, just te the 10 double faults. And, and, and the rest of her game, as I mentioned a couple of days ago, unbelievable 36 winners today okay those 36 unforced errors by the way of course 10 of those will be the double faults but 36 winners today served pretty well when when the serve was getting in and the rest of her game the rest of her game is there for getting to a, a grand slam final which again will be a barrier for her she's yet to get to a grand slam final am i right on that i'm sure you guys in the chat will correct me if i'm wrong but i don't recall her getting to a final before so uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really pleased for her. Uh, I really want to see her do well. Um, I've yeah, I've become a fan, and I, I like the fact that she was keeping count of the double faults. I think in her press conference afterwards, she said that um, you know she wasn't kind of focusing too much on it, and she was just kind of pleased to get it in. But 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 clearly she was counting because the sec you know the match finishes. She gives her interview and she says, yay, 10 double faults. And she's not getting that info, I don't think, in the in the two or three minutes in between. Um, yes, yeah, she made the semifinals of Wimbledon and the US Open last year, exactly. But she's not made a final. Uh, so that, uh, Jean, thank you for backing me up there. Um, Savalenko is improving round by round, Jean. Yeah, yeah, I think that's also a fair comment. Um, it's Fatima there. Sal Sal Savalenko will win the Australian Open with 100 double faults. Well, I guess for the tournament, she's probably on about, yeah, 40-odd double faults so far, 35, 40. Um, 
I think she's going to have to reduce this from 10, if you like, to um, to win the Australian Open or even to make the final. But uh, but round by round, she's improving both her game in general and also the double fault thing. I mean, when she lost the first set, I was a bit concerned. Did she, I think she went a break down at the beginning as well of the second set, or it was certainly touch and go at the beginning, but she managed to prevail. And then obviously, I think by the time she got to the third set, her confidence was, was going and, and was firing by then. And arguably the third set was, was Sabalenka certainly at her best in this tournament, but probably at her level, if you like, can she keep going with the, with doing 10 plus double faults in a match? I don't think so. I think she, if she continues to do give away, you know, if you start a match giving your opponent a 10, um, point advantage then then so be it by the way i have noticed that we probably haven't got too many soccer or football fans in the chat because i'm not seeing anything or basically it's still nil nil between may united and west ham but anyway sorry back to the tennis um let's have a look at some of the other matches that occurred over the last 24 hours or so um Sitsi pass ending benoit pairs uh two match winning streak which for Benoit Pair is uh, is basically him on fire. Uh, bearing in mind, he sort of tends to go on five or ten match losing streaks to win two matches back to back. Arguably, it's been a good tournament for Pair. I mean, getting to this round. But does this say a bit more about Sitsipas uh, and where he's at that he's dropping a set to Benoit Pair, albeit on a tiebreaker? Um, I again coming back to Gil Gross. He has Taylor Fritz beating Sitsipas in the next round. What do you think? I think in my prediction at the beginning of the tournament, I had Sitsi Pass knocking Fritz out in the next round. But I have to say, looking at how the tournament has gone, and yeah, I don't know. It's 50 50 for me. Uh, a fully, I, I do think that Sitsi Pass, one thing I will say though is he has mentioned the fact his elbow is not troubling him uh, as yet. So that's good news for him and his, and his supporters. But um, that's touch and go. There's some tasty. We're going to come to the next round, by the way. But, but I think um, Sitsi Pass against Fritz. And Chilic against um, against Felix, it's exciting. Uh, I think those are really close, close, close matches. Uh, let me know in the chat how you see those two uh, going. Um, Kenan there, Kenan Joker, really getting on the Chilic bandwagon. Chilic wins the Australian Open 2022. Uh, Gene mentioning that it's a good thing for Sitsi Pass that Flint was went to five sets today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I think if Sitsipas was a few years, sorry, I think if Fritz was a few years older, um, yeah, I, I still don't think it's a big deal. I think the more, more important thing is the confidence he'll get from, from going through. Uh, hi, Liam, by the way, he's late evening uh, where you are. No, it's nice to have you in the chat. Uh, better late than never. Uh, Liam, that's nice to see you here. Um, Meg there. Hey, welcome to the house. Yeah, we're all in the house. I, I, I feel as though it's a, it's a bit more of a cozy event this afternoon, uh, or, or this evening because, uh, we've got some of the regulars in and that's nice to have you here. Don't forget to click the like button. I would say don't forget to subscribe, but I think pretty much everybody that I'm seeing here is probably a subscriber. Uh, but great to have you on board. Please let me know in the chat, by the way. Yeah, Fritz is playing well. Let me know in the chat because I think these matches are really, really tight. Fritz, City Pass. Just tell me who have you got winning and in, in how many sets, and also Chilich Felix. I'm going to go with um, Sitsi Pass to just edge it against Fritz. Four sets, I'll say, and I'll go with Felix beating Chilich in five. Uh, yeah, wouldn't be shocked with a Fritz winning. I mean, they're, they're just so so close. Um, Fritz in four. Uh, you're going for that, uh, Dominic. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a that's a big call, I would say. Um, I've got, uh, and you're going Chilich and Fritz. So Gene and I basically disagree, I think, on both because I have Sitsipas edging it and Felix edging it. Um, Liam, just touching on Rublev is a shambles at slams, by the way. Uh, two one-dimensional to ever win one. Harsh, but arguably fair. Um, and I, I love the fact that Liam wasn't here for the early section, but I, I think you've summed up kind of what I said about Rublev earlier on, and, that, and that's great, yeah. Uh, if it goes to five, Dominic, they're going for Felix. But yeah, so anyway, uh, let keep going with those predictions. But I will move on uh, to some of these other matches that I uh, that I haven't touched on. Obviously, we've got Nadal and Barty on there. We, I know that was yesterday, but nevertheless, uh, important to remember their presence. And <laughs> how can we forget? Uh, Halep obviously going through in straight sets, a nice, comfortable win for her. Medvedev, uh, by the way, we'll just touch on this. Uh, I think it's impossible to ignore the, the Australian Open favourite. I think that's a, 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 another... 
Feather in the cap, I think it's another reason to give you confidence. Obviously, he played uh, van der Slanschlup at the... Oh, what about that pronunciation, ladies and gentlemen? Van der... Oh, I can't do it again. You know who I mean. Um, he lost one set to the Dutchman last year at the US Open en route to winning the, uh, the US Open. Am I right? I think he did drop a set against him. Um, yeah, Medvedev in the final, Kennan. Kennan, that's a decent prediction, but I don't think you're exactly putting yourself out there by by suggesting he gets to the final. I, my question about Medvedev is, does he win it? And I know he's the favourite, for some people, clear favourite. I still have Zverev winning it. I really do. And, and I'm maybe a recency biased with that, uh, with that ATP Tour Finals win when Medvedev won easily. Um, maybe, maybe uh, sorry, Zverev won easily, sorry, um, in that final, in, in the ATP Finals. So... Yeah, um, I have Zverev beating Medvedev in the final. Let's see. what. Tell me what you think in the chat. Uh, we'll be coming to other matches as well. Oh, well, finally, just the last... Um, uh, yeah, we no, we can't. We get Medvedev-Felix in the, potentially in the quarterfinals, I think, uh, you dear. I think. Let me know in the chat if I've got my roots. But they're certainly in the same half um, uh, for those two. Uh, the Netherlands player played really well. I like that, Megs. Yeah. Um, but Medi has all the tricks and is now more focused. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a good point regarding Medvedev is, uh, you know, he's somebody who seems to be wearing the, the Grand Slam title is quite well. That doesn't always work. Some of the players, they win a slam and then they rest on their lols, but Medvedev is doing anything about it. I'm just going to finish my coffee. Oh, the mug. Sevilla. I lived there for three years. Southern Spain. Uh, uh, no, no amazing tennis players coming from Seville, though, by the way. Um, but I, I can't wait for that day to come. I, I obviously we've got Rafa from Mallorca and the other players from other parts of Spain. But but yeah, so uh, back to it anyway. Uh, where were we? Yeah. So, yeah, let me know. Medvedev looking good. Uh, not dropping a set. I want to finish, though, with Collins Towson. It was a match we covered on the live uh, thing last night. I actually listened to them, to the to the commentary we had. I didn't see the match, but I was listening to the commentary. It was really, really tight. Obviously, five all going uh, into that that point. And yeah, um, I, I I think it's a great win because I, I saw that as being 50-50, the way Towson is playing. And a young player who I think is, this I think could still be a breakthrough year. You may even say it's becoming a, a breakthrough year for her. Uh, maybe I'm going over the top. Uh, May there asking, what languages do I speak? Uh, May, let me know what languages you speak. Actually, everybody, let me know in the chat. I know Fatima is multilingual. I know Jean has at least two languages. Uh, I know Liam ha is very good at English. Uh, so hats off to him. In fact, Liam, I believe, is a multilinguist. He speaks um, British English, American English, Australian English, Facebook English, Old English, and Shakespearean English. So hats off to you, Liam. Um, so there you go. But what languages do I speak? I speak English and Spanish. And <laughs> and I speak fluent Silkanese. Nice. Yeah. Um, I Oh, nice, Jean. Jean has Dutch, Afrikaans, German and English. German, Jean. Alles tip top für dich. Um, Deutsch ist meine dritte Sprache. So that's my my sort of third language, if you like, German in my in my list, but it is the weakest of the three by a long way. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to improve. I feel very comfortable in English and Spanish. That's no issue. But uh, German, still some way to go. Uh, let's say that. Uh, let's say I'm an intermediate. I can get by. I can have small talk and, and some conversation, but some important learn. Kenan there, you've got uh, German and Croatian. Kenan, but you speak English too, I guess. Uh, Fatima has German, English, and a little bit of French. Nice. Yes. Um your dear has Beavis and Butthead English. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means. But um, a, a nice reference, by the way, Beavis and Butthead, and a 90s TV show, uh, uh, which is quite cool. Okay, let's move on and back to the tennis because I have a football match to watch and I'm sure all of you have things to do. Looking ahead uh, to tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, whatever, I don't know where you are, um, I guess it's about 2.30 in the morning in Melbourne right now. So if you're there, it's today. But for the rest of the world, pretty much it is tomorrow. Uh, Barty, Anisimova, how do you see that going? Three sets, I think. Um, I, I think Anisimova, her level against uh, Osaka in the previous round was so high. Pegula, Sakari. That's, there's some, look at those four matches, by the way. The, the bottom four, obviously, the next day, I believe. Um, 
But uh, today we'll have, or tonight or tomorrow, whatever it is, we've got these top four matches. But look at that. They could, all four of those matches could easily go three sets. Let me know what you think. Um, Azarenka, Krejcikova, I think Azarenka might do that. Am I... Am I getting too excited for Azarenka? Am I being too down on Krejcikova? Let me know what you think in the chat. Um, Keys Bedosa. I'm going Bedosa, but I'm not as confident about her as I was a couple of days ago. I think that match that she had, um, yeah, where she just prevailed in three sets uh, and the third set super tight. Um You've got Pagula in three, Vika in three, Bedosa in three. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I think all those matches could go three sets. I know you're thinking Bardi's going to probably win in straight sets, but I can easily see Anis and Mova, uh taking a set in that match. Um, wouldn't that be great? Four three-set matches. Um, anyway, so that's the the women's matches. Oh, and by the way, we've got Keith Bedosa is our live uh, cover. Watch along tonight. Um, make sure you tune in for that. I think it's on midnight, more or less, UK time. So that's 1 a.m. here in Germany. Uh, you'll have to do that. And 2 a.m. it'll be in South Africa. So, Gene, if you manage to stay up for that, good luck. Um, oh, by the way, Dominic, thanks for the compliment. I enjoy the channel, but she's got you've got to leave for a morning hit. No problem, Dominic. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, Liam, eager, yeah. You obviously on the on the eager bandwagon. Uh, I think she'll win that. Obviously, that's a, a, another day ahead, so I'll probably focus a bit more on that tomorrow. But, yeah, I mean, she's... She's going through. The reason, by the way, just, just as a broad comment regarding Swacek, Swacek and uh, and the Halep thing, uh, a lot of a lot of people sort of are choosing Halep over Swacek in this half of the draw, and I've kind of stuck with Swacek, and so I've got to kind of stick to it. And uh, so really it's all about the prediction thing. Sabalenka, by the way, that's a nice uh, quarter, uh, fourth round for her. But like I said, I don't want to dwell too much on the day after tomorrow. Let's have a look at the men's for tomorrow, uh, what we've got coming up. Uh, ba -ba -ba, just scroll down here on the GTL account. Uh, yeah, so here we've got uh, tonight's stroke, tomorrow morning's matches. Uh, Ketsmanovic, by the way, and Monfils. These are the two guys, if you like, that when Djokovic was on that flight home, was being sent home. You, I almost wonder if those two guys were leaning on the Australian government. What was his name? Hawk. Go on, please, Hawk. Send Djokovic home because Ketsmanovic is now in a fourth round, pretty much because um, Djokovic isn't there. And Monfils is the favourite to to reach the end of his quarter, so to speak, because Djokovic isn't there. Uh, I see Monfils winning this, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? But Monfils' level has been great so far. Carreño Busta Berrettini. I think that's a nice match for Berrettini. I think he'll be quite looking forward to that. I, I had uh, Berrettini going out to Alcaraz, so, so good luck. To, well done for him for winning that match. Uh, will he be feeling the effects of five sets? I don't think so. One of the fittest guys on tour, 25, 26 years old. I don't see that being a problem for him. You don't want to have too many five-set matches in a tournament, but any of the players, basically 30 or under, shouldn't struggle. Zverev, this will be interesting. Will Zverev drop a set? I see. I think most people have Zverev coming through, me included. I think it'll be interesting. If he wins in straight sets again, that will be a hell of a, uh, you know, an achievement to not drop a set uh, and make the quarterfinals with sh playing Shapovalov at this round. Because Shapovalov, as we know, is decent. My, my problem with Shapovalov, who obviously took a set off. Did he take a set off Djokovic last year? No, he got to a tie break, I think, at the end of the first set and probably should have won that first set against Djokovic. But uh, at Wimbledon. Um, I think this will be, this will be a, a, an interesting match in terms of where Zverev is at. If he wins in four or five, Maybe that will just increase the doubts before a potential match against Nadal. Nadal, by the way, is going to be on during the day uh, against Manorino. I think most people will have Nadal as favourite for that match, of course. Um, Hit God MB, by the way, suggesting that Svedov will not drop a set. Uh, Yadir, by the way, really going for it. Five set Chapo. Uh, I see it's his time. That's a, a big call there from Yadir. Um, let's see if that ends up coming uh, true. Every Croatian is now a Ketsmanovic uh, supporter there from Kenan. Uh, by the way, Kenan, you didn't list English in your languages. And uh, what's this? Silky, if JG asked you to stream Nadal, would you do it? Uh, yeah, well, it's like probably three or four in the morning here. So I think it would be tricky. And I think both JG and I will be watching. But perhaps due to our anxiety, yeah, and it's three or four in the morning, probably means we won't be covering it. You'll have to... Ask Ben when he's covering the match tonight if, if they have any plans to do that. But the, the timing is just 
sucks. The timing for us as a viewer sucks. The timing for Rafa, I think, is pretty good. I think Rafa has been leaning. Let me know if I'm if I'm being too much of a conspiracy theorist here. I think Rafa throughout the tournament has been leaning on having daytime matches to get three out of four. That will be after because he's got a daytime match tomorrow. I mean, it's it's scheduled for the early hours here, but it'll be certainly in the daylight. No matter how many of those women's matches go to three sets before. I wouldn't be surprised if he's leaning on it. And this will be the 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 end of his daytime run because as it gets to the quarters and the semis and the, and the final, if he does go that far, you know, he's going to be on nighttime pretty much all the way to the final. But he's to have three out of four for, you know, a 20-time Grand Slam winner during the day because they'll be wanting him on in the evening. And they got him on on Friday in the evening, of course, Friday night, but he managed to have his first. Last year and the year before, he was playing lots of his matches in the evening. But at this stage last year, I think he pr- produced... Uh, certainly his best performance on a p- hard court in the last two years, I think, was against uh, Fognini at this stage last year where he won in straight sets, but his level was really, really high. Uh, you could probably say he then carried that forward for the next two sets against um, against uh, Sitsipas last year. Uh, Liam says he'll be watching Nadal over breakfast, Perks of the Far East. Uh, Nadal always uh, whining to play in the day. Lol there from Gene. Yeah, I think you might be right. He's always... You know, wanting to play in the day. He's mentioned about how he gets a bit more topspin on the ball in the daytime conditions. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. Let's see how that pans out. But I do see uh, I do see Nadal prevailing, Sverev, uh, Berrettini and Monfils. I think it's a little easier to call those matches than the than the uh, the women's side. Um, yeah. Uh, Fatima there saying, Gene, true that Nadal doesn't like to play at night. Yeah, that's right. I think he prefers in the daytime. But I don't think he'll have much choice from this round onwards or from the next round onwards, I should say, should he beat Manorino? Am I dismissing Manorino too easily? Boom. Let's talk about that. Um, just a quick reminder for tonight's live watch along, Madison Keys against Paola Badosa. That's how we're going to be. That's how pretty much Aussie open day seven, as it will be tomorrow, uh, kicks off. And that's how the GTL podcast will be kicking off too. Uh, quick final predictions on that. Uh, if anyone wants to highlight that in the chat. Also, if you've got any final questions for me, uh, that'll be great. Just very quickly fire off your questions for me in the chat before we depart. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. I have no idea how many likes we're on so far, but I would like to think we're, we're let's say, well, we on 30 likes, uh, 40 likes. That would be nice. Three likes, uh, one like, uh, uh, let's not be too greedy. We started the video on four likes. I saw that. So, um, uh, you have Bedosa and Gene, but, uh, Gene has Bedosa and Gene, uh, three. Um, what have we got here? We requested Silky substitute for JG. Will you do it, Silky? Meg's carpentry. Um, let's talk about that some of the time. Uh, two's company, three's a crowd, as, as you're probably pointing out there. But um, anyway, Almino, thoughts on Demon Sinner? Uh, sorry if I missed it. No, I, I didn't mention them because I think that is due in a day or two. I have Sinner probably emerging from that one uh, pretty well. Fatima, thanks for the compliment. Hey, we've got an update, albeit one that I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not excited about West Ham nil, Man United nil so far, but thank you, um, Andre Bernat. Uh, thanks, Fadonia, yeah, for the compliment. Great to have you on board as always. Um, final questions, quick, 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 fire them away. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Bedosa, they're in three sets for Mupak. Nice prediction. John's forever blowing bubbles. Yeah, uh, uh, that's more of a JG thing than me. But uh, go the hammers there from Almino. Yeah, Liam, by the way, is a Chelsea fan and he's got a, a podcast. Please do check that out if you ever get the chance. And Liam, I would love to have you on the channel. Uh, we, uh, it would be great to have you on, even just for a 10-minute chat to talk about tennis. And uh, uh, what was it you said yesterday? Uh, how many how many um, drinks have we got to have outside Philippe Chatre? They were Zambucas, were they? Uh, I can't remember, but you said eight. Just the eight. I thought we might go nine, but fair enough. Maybe you want to diet. Uh, Silky, reach out to JG about it. Uh, he will laugh that we are following up. Yeah, I will. I'll have a quick chat with him later. Oh, another Chelsea fan. No Man United fans, by the way. What's going on? Everyone's Chelsea. Go the Hammers. Uh, but no United fans. Well, no questions. Uh, I can't can't lie to you. I'm a bit hurt by the fact that I've got no questions in the chat. Um, anything else I've missed out on before I uh, head off? Oh, 39 likes. Thanks, Ben. Um, 39. I guess that's all right. Uh, imagine John Silk and a sto- Stone Island ro- rocking up at Stratford. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Okay, nice. Uh, me too, Kenan. 
Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, guys, 39 likes. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you click subscribe. And actually, I'll tell you what I will do for tomorrow. I'd like to... Uh, can Oh, nice. Just one quick question here. Can Anisimova be upset Barty? No. Uh, that's my answer to that question. But thanks for the question, Andre. Uh, I can see her winning a set, but not ultimately lose. Whoa, 52 likes. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, cool. So, yeah, I'll tell you what we're going to do for tomorrow. I'd like you to tweet me. If you've got any questions, you can tweet me anytime over the next 24 hours. Probably it's a good idea to wait until day seven gets underway. But send me a, send me um, some tweets my way tomorrow uh, if you've got any questions, particularly as the matches unfold. You know, perhaps even as, as a match finishes. Great, 54 likes now. Michael is a Birmingham City fan. Wow, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, send me send me some questions throughout the day tomorrow, and I'll try and highlight them uh, when it comes to the Day 7 roundup. And it's, you know, the matches are coming thick and fast. I have a question, by the way, which I, I, I can't quite work out. There's going to be a two- or three-day gap for some of the men's players, right? Especially those that kicked off on, on Day 1, i.e. Nadal, Zverev, etc., because... They're going to be playing their fourth round on Sunday, their quarterfinal on Tuesday, presumably, and their semifinal on Friday. So there'll be a, a three-day gap there, if I'm right. Um, Almino, I'm, I don't really tune into the Discord much. Oh, okay, so you're a Discord person. Uh, but, I mean, you can still highlight your questions in Discord for sure, and Ben can pass them on. I could easily click on there, but, uh, you know, I'm a busy guy, Almino. I'm a busy guy, Um I'm not that busy. I'm just a bit lazy, if I'm honest. Hey, guys, like and subscribe, and see you tomorrow.